Welcome back. We're ready to bring you the top headlines and help you get started for the day. The first wake up call of 2024. Mm -hmm. We've got a new day, a new week, a new year. And as we look back on 2023, I have to walk you through the weather that we experienced in Duluth, starting with your temperatures. These are the mean monthly temperatures compared to normal, and it only goes on this map five degrees within for the max, which is why we are off the charts for December 13 degrees above our average monthly temperature. Overall, though, you get an idea of how we did kick off 2023 on the very warm side in January. We had a cold March and April. After that, we settled into this warmer stretch with the pattern shifting into El Nino with the most dramatic being in December. As for precipitation, we had a very wet start to the year consistently. Then that dry May set the stage for the drought that we were stuck in. Finally had relief from that with a wet September over 10 inches of precipitation. After September, the next wettest month based on uh, how much we picked up compared to normal was December, where we had over double uh, that typical amount of precipitation. Now, when it comes to January, right now our temperature outlook is nothing too significant, only slightly on the warm side of average with that light shade of orange for the Twin Ports in East. You go west and you find that cooler air from the southwest into the Dakotas and precipitation. The greens are to our south. All that gray means equal chances at or uh, at a, a below or above normal precipitation for January in the Northland. All right, thank you, Brandon. And while the weather is also disrupting the ice on our outdoor skating rinks, the Portman Amateur Hockey Association has decided to postpone the Great Skate once again. It was originally set for December 15th and was rescheduled for next Friday, but now they're pushing it back another week to January 12th. The Portman Jamboree was also scheduled for last weekend. This is the association's largest fundraiser of the year. Directors hope to raise $10,000 in funds to help help cover the rising costs associated with equipment, facilities and jamborees. And following several incidents of rescue calls on Upper Red Lake, the Beltrami County Sheriff's Office has released a statement saying there will be new restrictions for vehicles at the lake. Vehicles are now barred from traversing Upper Red Lake until the sheriff rescinds this order. Snowmobiles, all-terrain vehicles and all motorized vehicles are prohibited from going on the ice. And a violation of this order is a misdemeanor that could result in a fine if convicted. Other inland area lakes have very inconsistent and ice conditions, so extreme caution should be used if you do choose to venture on area lakes and make sure to check the thickness of the ice frequently. Officials say you should not drive vehicles on that ice. And even though there's not much ice or snow on the roads, there's plenty to, of auto care to be done. We reached out to several local repair shops in the Twin Ports, and we found out that some folks have been waiting several months for car repairs from supply chain issues and not having the parts needed to fix the vehicles. I've been in it myself about 15, 16 years, and over the last few years, uh, just the amount of accidents is I think tripled in a sense. We've been very busy. A lot of different factors, even during COVID. It's, it, we were busy then too. Nelson also said a good idea folks can take advantage of is having automobile rental insurance in order to have a car you can drive while waiting for repairs to get done. And Senator Amy Klobuchar was in Duluth yesterday to talk about the goal for securing federal funds for the reconstruction of the Blotnick Bridge before the end of this month. The reconstruction will cost over $1 billion, with half of that funding coming from the federal government. Duluth has applied for three different kinds of grants from the Department of Transportation. I'm looking at that infra grant right now is the one I think we would be getting first. We know we have a short construction season up here. We want to get this grant in January. Senator Klobuchar also said there's bipartisan legislative efforts in Minnesota and Wisconsin to get the necessary federal grants. And now a new Minnesota state law will let driving students take their classroom course completely online. It still doesn't replace the behind the wheel instruction you need to get a driver's license. But instead of spending 30 hours in a classroom, students can now do those lessons virtually. 18 driving schools across Minnesota are authorized to administer the course. 
And the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources is launching what they call a loon restoration project. The project is an effort to protect loon habitats from threats like human disturbance and pollution. They will also install artificial nesting platforms in certain locations to draw in more loons and monitor loon populations. And the 218 Tap House is officially open. The new Cloquet business offers 29 self pour beer, cider, and seltzer taps, alongside a bar and lanes of duck pin bowling, which is like regular bowling but on a smaller scale. You can call ahead to make a reservation. Plus, if you get hungry, the restaurant has partnered with Sammy's to serve fresh Delicious. pizza. And Brandon, as we are heading out the door, how are our temperatures looking? Well, that by the lake temp is 21 right now. A dark view with a bit of for Jeep Ram Harbor cam because of the thick clouds that start off our day. Duluth Transit Authority bus stop forecast shows 17 as the temperature being observed on the hill right now. We will top off closer to 30 this afternoon with some sun shining as we do head through the day. Just got to get through the next few cloudy hours and then a brighter view. 29 Butternut, 30 Hayward, 31 Duluth and could be above freezing as far west as Big Fork by that and even International Falls today. Then tonight, temperatures stay mostly in the 20s. We'll start off the overnight period with clear skies and then an increase of cloud cover starts to bring a couple of light snow showers to the borderland with little to no accumulation tonight in those areas. Tomorrow, we have grayer conditions across the region, upper 20s to low 30s. Tomorrow evening, another round of light snow possible from the north, not quite reaching the Twin Ports. And then it's the South Shore that could locally pick up one to three inches near Ironwood during the day Wednesday. After that, not much going on the rest of the week, staying quiet, staying consistently cooler with highs in the 20s. By the weekend, some snow that I'll be tracking for you. All right, thanks, Brandon. And before we go, make sure you head over to our website to check out our life in, pic in pictures brought to us by Vision Pro. This is Jill's picture, and it is of the Bentleyville 20th anniversary fireworks. Yes, you know, those fireworks shows happen after my bedtime. So thank yes. you, Jill, for going there, capturing the scene and sharing it with us. It's really cool to see the lift bridge included in that photo just on the side of the firework display. Yeah, and I was thinking the same thing. I was like, wow, I was sleeping, but I was <laughs> <laughs> kind of hoping to see at least maybe some pictures. Yes, but and uh, maybe there were some New Year's fireworks going off yes. uh, in the region yesterday. Oh, too. I'm sure there were. All right, you can show off your life in pictures by submitting a photo on our website, and we'll share it here on Good Morning Northland.